So on my left, you see that I have a project running on localhost 8181, and you can see that I'm using the Power Apps Component Framework Test Environment. So this is the experience you have while creating any React or Angular project. So in this case, we're just going to replicate this simple component. So what this component does is that it allows a user to just edit their name and that is updated on this visual. So if I click edit and I just change this name, if I hit save, it's just going to simply update the visual. We'll see how we get to build this, how we get to test this uh, on our local computer and then we're going to deploy it to Dataverse for it to be consumed by a local developer. So what do you need to achieve this? You will need Visual Studio Code and you'll also need to install the Power Platform Tools extension that will allow you to engage and interact with the Power Platform. So I'll just go in, I'm just going to click Extensions and I'm going to search for Power Platform. And I already have it installed. So you're just going to go ahead and install this extension. And why we need this is because if you install this extension, it's going to make the latest Power Platform CLI, which is also referred to as PSC available on your VS Code terminal. And this is what we are going to use to create this control. So once you've installed all that, we can get started. So the first thing is that you need to create a directory where you're going to store your control. I already have an empty directory, so I'm just going to open it. And you can see it's empty. I don't have anything here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to initialize our component. So we're going to use the following command, PSC for Power Platform uh, CLI. I'm going to type in PCF, that is the Power Apps Component Framework. And then I'm going to use the command init to initialize our component. Pass in some three required parameters. So of course the name, you can call it demo class, the namespace. We can call it last demo space. And then the last one is the template. So the template defines what kind of data can be passed into your control. So it can either be field or data set. In this case, we're just going to use a field template. I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that it instantly creates that uh, Power Apps Component Framework project. And you can see that I have a bunch of files and a folder called demo class. We are being told to run npm install because just like any other project, we need to have our build tools installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to npm install. And while that happens, let's just take a quick tour on what we have here. So I'm going to open the demo class um, folder. So this is the name of the control that we gave it. So you'll see that I have several files in here. I have an index.ts file and a control manifest uh, input file. So let's start with this manifest file. So this manifest file, think of it as a representation of your control. Once this is deployed to the Dataverse, the manifest file actually now represents the control that you've built. So what we're just going to do is change the version from 001 to 100. I'm also going to change the description uh, key. So this description is what will be, what will appear here. So if I say on Power Apps, I want to insert a custom component, so if I select code, I want to insert that into my application, you'll find that we have a tooltip here. So this, uh, the information that goes into this description key is what will be displayed here to allow your user to know and understand more of the control that they will be using. Our control is just going to greet the user. So we'll just say it greets the user. So I'm just going to expand this a little bit. And let's check what we have in this manifest file. So we have our control. Then down here, we have a property node. So this specifically just uh, defines what the control expects to receive. I know that we'll be giving it a name. So you'll just pass in that the name of this, of what this control will get is a name. And we can just use the same for, we can just use the same for the key. And we can say that for the description key as well, we'll be receiving a name.
So if you have to make any references to any other files, so for example, if you want to add styling to your control, you can always uncomment this and you'll point it to a CSS file that you'll also add some styling code to make your control look better. The other file we have is the index.ts file. So you can see that our file automatically comes with an empty constructor and these four methods. So it has the init method, it has the update view method, it has the get outputs and the destroy method. All right, so those are the two um, files that have been generated. And what we're going to do is just do a quick NPM start. Let's see what we have so far. So I'm just going to do that, hit enter. Let me expand this a little bit more and you'll see that, yes, we've powered up our test environment, but we don't have any control being shown. So in this next video, we are going to see how you implement the code logic into your control.